praise Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord wow this is another day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it and here we are and we are rejoicing and we are so glad to be here to share the word of God with you and uh, to fellowship together I believe you're blessed I believe the Lord has kept you well and uh, I also believe that even today there is a word for you and me so welcome to the Marvelous Believer Show. Uh, my name is Lucy Lepore, and I'm again so grateful that you have found time to tune in and to fellowship with us. So blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made us to be called a people. There is a time we were not a people. Peter says once we were not a people, but now we have been made the special generation, the royal priesthood a very special people, God's own people. So we rejoice that this Lord Jesus Christ that we talk about, that we preach, has delivered us from not being a people. Once we were separated from God, once we were not in the covenant of Israel, once we were a people without a hope and without a God, but now we have been made God's own people, the sons of God. And today I, I want to talk about uh, something that I've titled the power of the tongue. I know that's a very common statement to very many of us. We keep saying about the power of the tongue. Sometimes we have been warned, don't just talk because there is power in the tongue. Sometimes we've said, uh, be careful what you do or what you say because the tongue has power. And um, because we keep saying, sometimes you say something and it happens and the tongue has power. Do you realize most of the times we say that because we, we are talking about saying something negative? So because the tongue has power, those negative things begin to happen. But I, I, I came today to discuss about saying again, because the tongue has power. How about saying positive things? Because it is also true, they will happen. So we are just going to uh, have a very brief uh, discussion today about the power of the tongue. And you realize that right from the beginning, God created this world through the power of the tongue. God spoke for everything that happened. God spoke. He said, let there be and there was. And um, since we are in the very nature of God, since we are like God, then it means that's the way. Even us, we are the very, God said, let us make man in our own image. We are in the exact image of God. We have the nature of God. So if he was speaking and creating, it means we can also speak and create. And actually it means for us to, to, to have anything manifesting, then we need to do what God also was doing. He was speaking. So today I'm talking about us speaking, not just thinking, but even speaking. When he was creating man, he also said, let us make man. He spoke, he, he talked, he uttered. And I can imagine when God was creating man, he, he thought about it. It must have been something he really thought about. It must have been something he, he, he strategized, he considered. Because we have always said in this show that God was a father who did not have sons or who did not have children. And he longed for fellowship. He longed to have sons. He longed to have his own image. Children that look like him. People that he can put his spirit in and the spirit can testify Abba Father. So he was a father and he longed to have sons. So he must have thought about it. He had created so many other things, but he still knew that I need more than the trees. I need more than the oceans. I need more than the skies. I need my own sons. And for your information, I know very many of us like saying we were, we were created to worship God. And it's not wrong to, to, for us to say we need to worship, but that's not, why we, that's not why God made us. I think that reduces us. The Bible says even the stones can worship. So when we say we were created so that we worship, we, we have reduced ourselves to just create, the creation like other things. God created us so that we become sons of God, so that he can have fellowship, so that he can love us, so that we can have that uh, fellowship. He can embrace us in his love and he can hold us like his sons. And as we can call him Abba Father, he created us for sonship, for relationship, for fellowship. And then we can worship him for who he is. But he didn't create us just to. That makes God almost a selfish 
uh, God, that he just created us so that we can worship him. Yet we know if he wants worship, he can get worship from the rocks. He can get worship from the animals if he wanted. But he created us so that we are sons. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about is how God must have considered all that before he made man. That means by the time he made man, he had desired, he had wanted, he had longed, and that was not enough. Where, what I'm driving at is that longing and desiring and wanting and strategizing is not the end. There is the part for speaking. And that's what I'm talking about today. There is the part for saying. There is a part for calling it into, into reality. There is the part for uttering the words. So if all our, our lives or for a long time we have always said, hey, be careful what you say because the tongue has power. How about, yes, let's say it so that it happens. Let's speak those positive things so that they can happen. Even when, uh, and then I want us, as we, as we proceed, there's another concept that I want to bring. Because when God created man in chapter one of Genesis, he, spoke, he said, let us make man and he made man. But he made man as a spirit being. That at, at that point, man was a spirit, but man was already made in the spirit. But we see in, in uh, later on, God now forming man and bringing that spirit being into reality. So as we proceed, there is um, I want us to I want us to to learn that we have. There's a verse in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 that says, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. How do we bring that every spiritual blessing to manifest in reality? How do we pull from the spiritual to the reality? And that is why I am saying we need to call them. We need to speak. We need to utter. We need to command them to manifest. We need to speak them until they become. Praise be to Jesus. So we are in God's very nature, like we have been made like God, but when we speak, the, the what, what is in the spirit manifests in the natural. There's a very interesting verse that I want to share with us in Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20. I'll read New King James Version. It says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Now, this is Proverbs. This is, this is the wise man speaking. And he's talking about our stomach being satisfied from the fruit of our mouth. So what will satisfy man? Is it's not what we have on the trees, it's not what is anywhere else, it is what it is the mouth that is the power of speaking because it is speaking that brings everything that we get. You speak to get a job, you speak to get a business, you speak to get a friend, you speak for life. That is why, even when it comes to these spiritual matters, there is a place for speaking. In the natural, there is nothing else. You, there is nothing you get until you have spoken. You go for interviews, you speak. You, empl you are employed, you speak. You want a job, you speak. You, you want a business deal, you speak. You want a wife or a husband, you want a, a marriage partner, you speak. We speak for everything. So the same happens. That is a concept from the, the, the wise man says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. He speaks for satisfaction and from the produce of his lips he shall be filled so the, the, the our lips will produce what will fill us our lips is what god gave us so that we speak even to the atmosphere to the spirit realm and the spirit realm responds by manifesting in the physical so today i'm 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 just uh, encouraging us about the idea of speaking we have always been warned against um against uh, being careless with the words but um, i want us to reverse it so that we speak but we know we are speaking positive and when we speak positive it manifests when you speak it manifests someone told us no wonder jesus was healing every person who was mute because he knew this is a spirit of 
a damp and mute spirit and it is just denying these people the opportunity to speak and it is in speaking that they will be filled so he was telling us it's no wonder that whoever came to Jesus he was damp he would rebuke the spirit and i agree with that praise be to Jesus so ephesians says uh, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places now what i'm saying is those spiritual blessings have already been released the, our blessings our destiny is already set our blessings have already been released they are not with god in heaven somewhere they have already been we have already been blessed actually we have been blessed and those blessings have been released for us and they are in the spiritual heavenly places the only way to bring them to manifest in your life the only way to bring them to manifest in your family the only way to bring them to manifest in reality is when we command them we need to learn to command them we need to be speaking you speak you declare that i am healed you declare that i am blessed you declare that i am i am rich you declare those things you speak them until they happen you command sickness to go and you use your words you don't just there are demons that will not just go when you wish they have gone in your mind like i'm saying even god creation itself i am sure he had everything planned but he spoke it into becoming so we need to learn to speak uh, there is a verse maybe we can share it matthew chapter 17 verse 20 and Jesus was um I think speaking to his disciples yes verse 20 says so Jesus said to them because of your unbelief for assuredly I said okay I think they had asked a question verse 19 maybe let me start from verse 19 then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said why could we not cast it out I remember it's a story where they had uh, failed to cast out a demon and then the Jesus came and cast it out and now they were asking him why couldn't we cast it out and he said because of your unbelief and then he said assuredly i say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you now jesus was was telling them if you have as little faith as a mustard seed But today what I want to 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 highlight is not even about the little faith. Some of us have a lot of faith. Actually let me assure you, you have enough faith. The Bible says we have all been given the measure of faith. Everybody listening to me, you have faith enough to move a mountain. You have enough faith. So Jesus was telling them, if you have as little as a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain you can say to this mountain now i want to highlight the part of saying to the mountain we can we speak blessings to manifest what about the things that are now come to our lives that want to manifest in our lives and they are not uh, good they are not uh, they are not our desires they are they are maybe weapons that have been sent against us by the enemy what do we do with them those are the mountains we are talking about jesus said if you have a little faith which i am talking to you my marvelous believer and you have enough you have more than a mustard seed some of us have enough faith as big as the mountain itself but there is the part of speaking to that mountain you say to that mountain as long as you have not spoken that mountain remains there with all your faith put together the mountain remains there the mountain continues to mock you the mountain continues to uh, to 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 embarrass you the mountain continues to annoy you it is standing there looking at you but you need to speak to it the the miracle the magic is in with your faith which i am saying is already enough speak to the mountain speak to your challenges speak to that sickness speak tell it to leave you tell it it does not belong to your body tell it you do not belong to their kingdom speak and then declare there are some demo- not there are some actually mountains challenges demons even jesus told them uh, for everyone who believes jesus said for whoever believes they shall cast out demons he did not talk about wishing them away you cast out demons you don't cast out demons in silence you cast out demons by speaking to them and rebuking them 
So there are things, there are mountains that will keep looking at you and laughing at you and, um, and embarrassing you and annoying you and putting you in a lot of uh, pressure and shame until you speak to that mountain. Until you speak, some of those mountains are waiting for us to speak. It is not faith that we don't have. It is the part of uttering. Praise be to Jesus. So I want to, I want to conclude with a, a, a verse that I purpose to conclude with. I, I, I wanted this to be the conclusion because I think it is, uh, it is powerful in my opinion. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. We have to learn to declare. Declare that I am am healthy. Declare that I am well. Declare that all is well. Declare positive things for your life. Declare positive things for your family. Speak them. Declare them. I'm not talking about fake it until you make it. Because when you fake it, you... But you, you speak with knowledge. For example, you could be unwell, maybe having some pain. But you have the knowledge that 2,000 years ago, Jesus died that you can be healthy. Jesus, the stripes of Jesus made you healed. So you already have knowledge. So you're not just faking it. You are speaking from a point of knowledge. I know my body should not be sick. And so I declare I am not sick. I could be feeling pain here. I will say pain you are living. I am not sick. I cannot be sick. Christ was stripped that I can be healthy. And so I speak it. I am not faking it. I'm speaking it from the point of knowledge. But even if the symptoms were there, I would not accept to confess them. I will speak that I am healed. And once your spirit and your soul agree, your body just succumbs. If you believe it in your heart and your spirit knows, because the spirit man knows the truth, the spirit you knows that we were healed 2,000 years ago. The problem is in our mind, and that's the soul. If you are able to have your mind renewed to come to the right position that I was healed and your spirit knows you are healed, the body cannot resist. The body will succumb to that. If you can tell your mind that Christ became poor that I can be rich because your spirit man knows that and you tell you, you renew your mind up to that fact that Christ became poor that I can be rich, let me tell you. I do not know how, but poverty will just live. It is a spirit. It will go. So Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If there is a miracle that has, the greatest miracle that has ever happened to mankind, to humanity, it is salvation. It is the the ability of man to be rescued from the nature of sin and to become a righteous person in the eyes of God, to have the very nature of God. That's the greatest miracle that has ever happened to you, to me, and to every other person who is born again. That's the greatest possibility of a miracle that has been given to humanity. Now, what I want us to notice is that even with that, even with what I am calling the greatest miracle to ever happen, There is a part of believing in your heart and then confessing with your mouth. The only way to receive this great miracle I'm talking about, the only way to to receive salvation is to believe in your heart and to confess with your mouth. That's the power of the tongue. Even salvation comes from the confession of our mouth. So if the greatest miracle comes through confessing, then you can be sure every other miracle that is not as great as salvation will also come from confessing. So we, we may be, sometimes we pray, I wouldn't say we pray amiss, but we pray and we, we, we maybe are not praying with a lot of knowledge. Sometimes you, we go to prayer and all we say is we worship you, we love you, Jesus, thank you for saving us, we give you praise, you are worthy, you are Alpha and Omega, you know, but the, and that is not wrong. But there, sometimes you, all oh, that is all we say and then we believe we have prayed. Are there things that you need to you need to declare who you are as you pray? Change our let's pray, change our prayer language as you pray. Declare who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The minute you say that, that truth begins to be to be conformed into your body, so that if there is any condemnation, it begins to live. If there are any uh, 
avenues the devil has been using to weigh you down and to condemn you, they begin to be closed because you are confessing that you are declaring who you are and the reality is coming into, in, I mean, what you are declaring is coming to reality. Declare that I cannot be sick. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Declare that Jesus became poor, that I can be rich, and so I am rich. Declare those things as you pray. Speak them. Speak to your mountains. Tell them you have... I, you, I do, you, are, you have no portion in my life. Sickness, you are not my portion. Depression, you are not my portion. Suicidal thoughts, you are not my portion. You speak them. Don't just, it's not enough to just keep quiet and know you know. It's not enough to just keep quiet and wish. It's not even enough to just keep quiet and hope. There is a part of you opening your mouth and declaring those things and saying them with your mouth and refusing to confess otherwise and refusing if there is power in the tongue then let's be careful that you do not even confess hey i am not uh, today i am sick because you are already uh, embracing the sickness declare i was healed 2000 years ago declare sickness you have no portion in my life and those things begin to manifest so i believe uh, we are blessed i believe we have learned something let's be people that speak there is power in the tongue we are not going to fear to speak. We speak, but we speak positive things into our lives. And I promise you, as you continue declaring these things, as you continue speaking these things, the, the ones Paul calls in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Those spiritual blessings begin to manifest, begin to become reality in our lives because we have called them, we have declared them, we have commanded them. Praise be to Jesus. And um, I would wish to stop there for today. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in once again. And remember to share this link with someone. And uh, we are so grateful. This is Wema TV. We appreciate that you give us your time. And uh, keep blessed.